Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to chip like the pros. All right guys, so let's talk about chipping. Now, um, chipping something that I would love to do more videos on and talk about, um, and we do a lot more with the in-person lessons on, but not a lot of you guys watch the chipping videos as much as we want to, so uh, we don't get to do as much on this, but it's super uh, important, right? The, when you watch high-level players and their ability to score, even when they play bad. Uh, I know Mary and I were talking about the PGA Championship. I watch these guys go out and play, and shoot in the 60s and shoot under par, and they have nothing, right? Like they can't hit a ball in playoff. I saw Tiger shot 60, what did he shoot, 64? And he had nothing off the tee, right? He had nothing. Now he hit his irons good, but he gets the ball up and down, right? You watch these guys go play, they hit bad shots, but then they get up and down. One of the biggest differentiators between score ranges is chipping. Chipping proximity to the hole, up and down percentage, your ability to save par or make bogey instead of double, and it's super important. Um, so let's talk a little bit about today. Now in this video is chipping like the pros. I just kind of want to go, go over what we see those guys do and gals that are the best in the world, uh, some stock fundamental stuff, and one or two key pieces that I see them do that's different than what you guys do. All right, so chipping like the pros, right? First, we need to talk about setting up to the golf ball. When I coach chipping in person, probably 90% of the time, I have to tell people two things. One, I tell them to get their feet closer to the ball. Almost everyone I see that comes in chips and their ankles are about shoulder or just inside a shoulder width. And, and all the time I say, listen, let's get your feet closer together. How close? I want your heels almost touching. My toes aren't touching just because I flare out my left foot a little bit, but my feet are super duper close together. The only reason I need width of stance is for me to be able to shift some pressure in my feet for power. Now chipping, I'm trying to be weak on purpose. I'm trying to be precise. I don't want the ability to move a lot of pressure in my feet. I want good contact and precision, so we're getting our feet closer together. The second thing I always have to tell people from the down the line is constantly, you guys are not getting close enough to the ball. I mean, I don't know the last person that I coached in chipping who wasn't like a stud or played high level college or pros that stood close enough to the ball. Every single one of you guys, I'm telling to get closer to the ball. Why would you chip from back here if I could chip? I'm talking here and watch them go play. Like, don't even take my word for all this stuff. Watch good players chip and see how close they are to the ball. A lot of them are really close, like on top of the ball. If I'm hitting a baseline chip shot, here's my setup position, here's my grip. The golf ball is probably just a little bit more than a grip length away from my foot. That's how close it is. Now, some of you are gonna do this and get this close and be like, what the hell, I can't hit a chip shot from here. And then you're gonna try it and it's gonna be better right away, right? But I probably have to make two adjustments. If I'm standing this close to the ball, which should be normal, I may have to have the shaft go more vertical Okay, if, I, if the shaft is this vertical, how close could I stand? I could, close, I could stand as close as I want to with it. If the shaft is super low, well, I can't get super close. I have to be a little farther away. Shaft slightly more up, more vertical, would be better than shaft uh, too far down. Okay, that's part number one. And the other thing is grip down on the club, guys, right? Like if I'm doing a baseline chip shot, my thumb is almost to the end of the grip. There's no rule that says I got to chip from up here. I'm gonna chip from down here. I wanna get as close to the ball as possible. I wanna have as much control as possible. I used to even chip with my fingers on the shaft. There's no rule against that. I'd rather have control of that thing. All right, so get in closer to the ball. Get your feet closer. Have the shaft normal or more vertical, okay? When you guys hit it fat, the heel typically digs. You can get rid of part of that by having it vertical. And grip down on the club and watch those guys chip. I bet if you actually pay attention to it, you'll see they're closer to the golf ball than you think. I'll hit one from here, right? This is just sort of a stock, normal chipping setup. That's just a normal pitching position. That's not too close for me at all. Some of you guys are gonna feel way, way, way super close from there. But you watch them and you watch them chip. Super close, feet close, shaft is up. I'm gripping down here like this, and then just a normal pitch motion. So those are the setup pieces I want you to pay attention to. Um, that's how the pros do it. That's how you guys should do it too. Okay, a couple in-swing principles, right? There's two big ones that come up um, for me. Number one is hinge amounts. Eric, should I chip like Jason Day and Steve Stricker with no hinge back and through? Can I chip like that with very little hinge on both sides? Yes, of course I could chip like that. Or, hey, should I chip more where I have more hinge? 
Should I be a little bit more narrow and hinge and release on both sides? Can I chip like that, a little bit more hingy and a little bit more narrow on both sides? Well, the answer is you can do both of them. You just kind of have to match um, each side, meaning if you're gonna be more Steve Stricker, Jason Day, when you go back and sort of have less hinge, then, then you have to keep that sort of less hinge on the way through. You have to watch during the backswing. If you go no hinge, you don't wanna add hinge. The leading edge is gonna dig, you're gonna hit fat and thin. If you go no hinge style back and wide, then you go no hinge style through and wide. You gotta match it. And the opposite's true. If I'm gonna hinge a, a bunch going back with a very narrow arc, I gotta release a bunch with a narrow arc, right? So vertical, narrow, a lot of hinge, narrow with a lot of hinge on both sides. Either of those are fine. How much should you hinge? Play around with it. Try hinging a lot on both sides with your hands very close to your body. What happens? Try having your hands go farther away with no hinge. Try a middle ground with it, experiment with it. Just understand whatever you do going back, try and do the same thing going through. That's the first in-swing thing that pops up a lot. And the second thing that's gonna throw some of you guys off is swing plane. So if you watch the pros and a good chipper and pitcher, if I set up here from down the line, the angle that my shaft is on, if you guys watch some videos, sort of a lot of pros will draw a line through the shaft all the way up forever. Now the idea would be that the backswing, if the camera angle is good here, the backswing should be on the same plane, okay, as your setup, or preferably on or slightly outside, right? A lot of you guys, meaning like this would be on the plane, this would be outside of the plane, this would be inside of the plane inside of the plane causes problems. On the plane is fine. Outside the plane is fine. Inside the plane. Now, if you make a full swing and you go inside the plane, you've got time to get it back to normal. On a chip shot or wedge shot, you don't have as much time. If you go too far inside going back, a lot of times you're gonna to be too far inside and shallow coming down and you're gonna fight fat and thin shots. If I go way inside here, I'm gonna usually hit too far behind the ball or have some contact issues. I would prefer you guys, when you're chipping, to be right on the plane here like this or even slightly outside of the plane. I'd much prefer the club head working more outside when I'm doing pitching and chipping than inside. Inside can't happen. One other quick little thing, I said two, but you guys are getting a bonus number three. During the backswing, okay, on or outside the plane, match your hinge rates. Now, also we have a club face to deal with. We have other videos on the bounce. We have live lessons on the bounce. We have videos on how to use the bounce. I'm not gonna talk about that. Other than when you make a backswing, if your club face is really closed or tilted down, you're gonna use a lot of leading edge and you're gonna struggle with contact. If you make a backswing, where the club face is more open. How open? I don't know. Go open, go here, go toe up, go more than toe up, go way open. What happens when you open the face going back? See what happens. You have a lot of options from here. You got a lot of options from here. You can use bounce from here. You can release the club from here. If you come back and the face is really tilted down, have I seen some pros do that? Of course, I've seen some pros do good at everything, okay? I'm not saying you can't play golf like this. If your club face is tilted down though, you will use leading edge. You must have the hand more forward and you must clip it perfectly. Can Phil Mickelson do that? Yes, he can. Can you do that? I don't know. I'd rather bet on you being able to open the club face a little bit more, right? So hinging, whatever you do going back, do the same thing coming through. Swing plane. Stay on the plane or be outside the plane. If you're underneath the plane, you're probably in trouble. Club face, too closed is bad news. More open is good news. Those are the main in-swing principles. It's not everything, but it's the main deal. I have one other little in-swing thing that was supposed to be the whole point of this video, but it's just gonna be a portion of it that we'll talk about next. All right, so the last piece of the in-swing that I wanted to talk about, which was the idea that the whole video was supposed to be about, but we kind of rambled on in some other things that I think are valuable. Um, what we need to talk about now is swing length. Now, when I watch really good players, and you guys know, like a lot of the videos that we're doing are based on like, I sit down, I watch good players, and look at what they do, and then I'm just essentially trying to communicate what I've learned based on that. There's no theory behind any of this stuff other than like, this stuff works in real, in-person, live and in color. And this next piece here in terms of swing, like is something I've seen forever, kind of didn't know what I was looking at, but um, uh, it, it, it's real, it happens what the best players do in terms of swing length. Now, I was always taught growing up, or at least I thought I was taught, 
Now, obviously I had the ball back hands for that's another video, but I was always kind of trying to swing kind of short back and really accelerate on the way through. I remember always kind of someone telling me, hey, listen, you gotta really accelerate on the way through the trip, uh, chip shot to put that nice spin on. I'm really trying to add a lot of speed and stay short. And what happened to me was that my backswing got kind of short and then my follow through got long. And I have a decent pair of hands. I could time it sometimes, but man, when I would go off, when I was short like this, the leading edge would dig a lot. The ball would spin really unpredictably, unpredictably, right? Um, and there, Mary's nodding her head in the back. That Yes, that is a good word. It's very unpredictable with that. And it was like, hey, when I was on, it was good, but I was off a lot. Even to the point where like I developed chipping yips where it was brutal. And when I watch really good players, um, I really see the opposite of that. The point of this is how far back you take the club head relative to how far through you take the club head. Now, if someone asked me that and they're a beginning golfer, I might tell them, listen, Take the club head back a certain amount and take it through the same amount. To keep things simple, even though if it's not factually correct, you kind of try and take the club head back and through the same distance. But in fact, what I see really high level players do oftentimes is that the club head going back will be farther back than the club head coming through. And that doesn't mean that you need to accelerate a lot or decelerate a lot. Some people naturally think, well, hey, it's farther back, it's shorter through, I'm gonna decel. That's not necessarily true. I can go back like here and still add acceleration and come to a quick pause. If you watch guys around the greens and watch them play short shots around the greens or close to the greens, or especially out of thick rough, right? Or rough shots, you'll see a lot of them where the backswing gets longer than the follow through. And it's quite often. I don't recall, and you guys check me on this and send me a video if you know someone. I don't recall ever seeing a really good chipper and pitcher of the ball whose backswing club head traveled shorter than their follow throw. I've never seen it. I've seen a couple guys who sort of go short back like this and they swing really long through and they can kind of time it okay, but that felt brutal. That's a lot of leading edge. I've never seen someone good like that. Now, if you swing shorter back longer through and you're an excellent chipper and you're up and down percentage over 50%, then you do whatever the heck you want. But all else equal, you're, I'm telling you, your odds of success are better if they're a little bit longer back and shorter through. Now listen, if you're watching the video and you're someone who goes this far back and you stop and you just go like this through, then no, you shouldn't go longer back and shorter through than you do, okay? I'm talking just general. Watch the good players, watch how far back they go relative to through. There's other stuff involved with chipping, okay? This isn't gonna cure everything. What I want you guys to know is general things here, okay? Swing plane is a big deal. Those set up pieces, big deal. Backswing the follow lengths, play around with that. Maybe when you get in higher rough and you're closer to the green, take it back farther than you think and stop shorter. See what happens. Experiment with the other way. I'm telling you short back long through is bad. What the hell, if you get up there and you feel short back long through and you chip better, then that's fantastic. Then you do that when you go play. There's no rules here, okay? Anything goes. Uh, these are just some general things to think about. None of this guarantees you're gonna chip perfect, but use this part as the baseline. Those are the things you should be looking at when you chip. Um, those are the pieces I would start with. And then of course, if you have issues with there, there's gonna be some individual things um, within each one of you. We've done other videos on the bounce, so I'm not gonna talk about that. We've done other videos on how to practice, so I'm not gonna talk about that. This is just some general information. You then have to do all the practice stuff, get good at landing zones, up and downs, yada, yada, yada. So hopefully that makes sense. As always, if you guys have any questions on these pieces, leave me a comment down below. Hey guys, if you like this video, please do me a favor and click the like button down below. Click the notification bell if you haven't already, and please subscribe if you haven't. As always, if you guys have any comments, leave them down below. Thank you.